Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my joy to welcome you to this service of worship at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We're so grateful that you are worshiping with us today because we know that you will encounter God in this time. We'd love to know that you're here, and so if you would, take a moment and either click the link that's in this video description or scan the QR code that will show up on your screen in just a few moments. That'll take you to a survey where you can let us know that you're here and tell us if there's a way that we can be praying for you. Now I invite you to take a big, deep breath and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me now in our opening congregational prayer. The words will be on your screen. Let's pray now together. Holy and loving God, we thank you that you know us fully. You see our hearts and know our desires, and we can't keep any secrets from you. In this time of worship, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts through the breath of your Holy Spirit so that we can perfectly love you and fully praise your holy name. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Church, I'm Eun Su Kang, one of the associate pastors here. It is a great joy to lead us in our prayer. Please join me as we pray together. Holy God, your faithful community has gathered this day. You reached out to us in our distress and lifted us up. You give us new life and we are grateful. For some of us, 
this has been a wonderful week, but for others, trials and troubles seem to crowd into their lives. We ask your loving presence with all your people, O Lord. Heal our wounded spirit, restore a sense of joy in our lives. Loving God, thank you that you are a loving and gracious God. Thank you that your love is perfect, it never fails, and that nothing can separate us from your love. We pray that our lives would be filled and overflowing with the power of your love so we can make a difference in this world and bring honor to you. Help us to love as you love. Fill us with your spirit so that we can choose what is best in your way. We are weak, Lord, but we know also that even when we are weak, you are strong within us. Equip us to face each day with the power of your love, your forgiveness, and your grace. Gracious God, we especially pray for these whom we now name with our voices or in our heart. We thank you that you reach out to them, to all of those whom we have named, and for those whose names are in our heart. Help us to be witnesses to the power of Jesus Christ to make those changes in our lives. We humbly offer this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we have time to offer our hearts and gifts, I would like to remind you that you can give the ministry of Ricefield United Methodist Church through our website, smartphone apps, and through our mail. Let us continue to worship our God. I'm Pastor Eun Seo, and I'm so excited to have this time with you. So today, we are going to learn about very important and special things. That is, God's love. Now, before going to our lesson, let us play a little game. When I show this heart and say, God loves you, you should find someone around you and give a big smile and say, God loves you. Are you ready? God loves you. Did you make it? Okay, let us try one more time. Ready? God loves you. God loves you. Good, great job. How was your feeling when you said God loves you? Was it good? Were you happy? And did you feel love? Good. Let us learn about how much God loves every one of us. Did you know that God is the one who created love? Yes, God made it. And God wants us to know more about that. So in the Bible, in the book of 1 John, it says, Dear friends, let us love one another because Love comes from God. So love is like a big and warm hug from God. Can we can share with each other? Just like when we say, God loves you and shared our love with big smile. It made me everyone feel love and happy, right? But here is something more incredible. The Bible tells us God's love is so powerful that it can do amazing things in our lives. 
It can take away our fears and worries. God's love is like a superhero, always ready to protect us. So when we know and trust in God's love, we can be brave and kind and patient with others. It's like a special superpower that helps us to be a best version of ourselves. And when we show love to others, it can make a more best the world in our lives. So let's think about that. How can we share God's love with others? Here is the way we can do. Say kind words like God loves you and share your toys, cookies, and even a big smile and help someone in need and pray for others. So let us remember God's love is a gift and it's meant to be shared. So when we show love to one another, we make God happy and our hearts become more full of God's love. So Riceville kids, let's go out and be little love superheroes sharing God's love wherever you go. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much. Help us to remember that your love is with us always and to share it with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Doug Lane, senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And we're getting close to the end of our series on the letters of the New Testament. We're moving into um, the first and second and third John. So we're looking at uh, those letters today. Uh, specifically, we're going to pick up in first John chapter four, beginning in verse seven. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loves us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one's ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he's given us of his spirit. And we've seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we now in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. Whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they've seen, cannot love God whom they've not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you that you first loved us. And uh, Lord, I pray that we would uh, take your words to heart. And I pray, Lord, now that um, the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts would be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When someone says, I love you, the natural reply is, I love you too. If you're in a loving relationship with someone, you would expect those words in response. Our passage from 1 John today tells us that this is the kind of relationship 
that God has with us. It's not just about saying the words, though. John tells his readers in the chapter right before this one, little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. This week, he puts it like this. We love because God first loved us. Anyone who's ever started at Genesis and tried to read the Bible all the way through will tell you it's not an easy task. It can be very confusing if you're trying to figure out the nature of God. In some places, God is very caring and nurturing, providing for all of his people's needs. While in other places, he's so angry that he wipes out entire cities with the snap of his fingers. In some places, he's a rock that cannot be moved. And in other places, a conversation with a mere mortal can change his mind. In some places, he's insisting that people must follow his laws in order to live. And in other places, he's merciful and ready to give people many, many chances whenever they get something wrong. You see, what we have in the Bible is a relationship. It's about the relationship between God and his people. And it's told from the perspective of the people, with the only thing they have going on being their own limited experience. From their experience, they do the very best they can to figure out who God is. We do the same things today. We all try to make sense of God according to what's happening in our own lives. But we've added information about God that people in the Old Testament didn't have. You see, we don't have to wonder what God is like. We know. John's gospel explains it this way. No one's ever seen God. It's God, the only son who's close to the father's heart, who has made him known. If we want to know what God is like, just look at Jesus. In his letter, John is able to elaborate more on what he means by this. So lest we miss the point, he cuts to the chase and spells it out in three simple words. God is love. Of all the ways we can describe the nature of God, this is the most fundamental. God is love. It's not just a theory. It's a fact. And how do we know that? Well, because God became a human being and lived among us. He embodied compassion through his actions and his teachings. God, through Jesus Christ, healed the sick and touched the untouchables. He embraced those who others would turn away. He spoke on behalf of those who had no voice. He taught us to serve one another in humility and to even love our enemies. He stood up to those who put following the rules above mercy and compassion. His entire life was given in love, and it didn't stop there. Even in death, he gave himself in love for us. He went to the cross because he could only be who he was. He stretched out his arms in love for the world, and they nailed his hands to that wood until he could breathe no more. Let there be no doubt what God is all about. You look at Jesus and you will know that God is love. Now that's not just a nice thought that we could put on a Christian greeting card. It should change everything for us. Our reading for today says, Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. Our lives are given in response to God's love that was first given for us. But a lot of times we miss this. We may live in the way we think God wants us to live out of fear. That's living by the law. Now, we've talked about that already this summer. Or we may live in the way we think God wants us to live out of love. That's living by grace. Like when I first learned to ride a bike, my mom let me ride it anywhere I wanted to so long as I didn't leave the neighborhood. She did that out of love because she wanted to protect me from possible harm. She wanted me to experience the joy of bike riding, but she knew I wasn't ready to cross a really busy street. But when I got a little older, she let me ride my bike to my friends' houses who lived outside my neighborhood, maybe even a mile or two away. She did that out of love, too, because she wanted me to experience more joy and freedom with my friends. She trusted me at that point to make good decisions, not to get hurt or in trouble. In response to that love and trust, I made sure I got home in the evenings at the time she asked me to be home. I didn't want to disappoint my mom. 
It was a silent promise I made to her in response to the love that she had shown me. How different that is from the teenage boy or girl who lives in fear of a parent who lays down the law by saying, if you ever get yourself in trouble, you will not be welcome in this house. The result might be a life of, on the straight and narrow, but it's motivated by fear, not by love. As God's beloved children, He expects us to love one another. Not because He's going to stop loving us if we don't do what He tells us to do, but precisely because He'll never stop loving us no matter what we do. That's why John can make the bold assertion, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. You remember when Jesus was quizzed by that uh, Jewish expert in the law who wanted Jesus to tell him what the most important law was? You remember what he said? Jesus didn't identify just one law. He had to give two. He said, well, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. For Jesus, these are not two separate laws to live by. They are two parts of the same law. The way to love God is by loving your neighbor. It's not just a matter of saying, I love you, God, over and over and over again. It's about showing our love for God in the way we love other people. It sounds kind of easy, doesn't it? And yet as Christians... Boy, our failure to love because God first loved us has caused untold problems throughout history. In the name of God, we Christians have fought countless wars. We have burned people at the stake. We have closed our ears to the cries of the poor and the hungry. We have locked our doors and our hearts to people we deem unworthy of our community We've hung men from trees because we didn't like the color of their skin. We've told women that their leadership roles will be limited. We have prospered materially from the desperation of people we don't even know. And we have bombed buildings and hurt people all because we thought we were doing the right thing. We do these things and more in the name of God. And God is love? Why don't we get it? John had said, God is hate. Our actions might make more sense sometimes. But God isn't hate. God is love. And we love because He loved us first. Those who say, I love God and hate their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they've not seen. The commandment we have from Him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Why is that so hard? How is it possible for us to know and experience the love of God in our lives and then withhold that same love toward others? Maybe the key for us is opening up ourselves to receive the love of God in our hearts. So often we're closed off and God's love just really doesn't stand a chance. It's like putting a lid on a cup and expecting someone to pour water into it. When we open ourselves up to God's love, it's like removing the lid and filling our cup underneath a waterfall. That's the way writer Annie Dillard puts it. She says, you catch grace as a man fills his cup under a waterfall. Imagine what that would be like. Our cup would spill out all over the place, but it would keep getting refilled all the time. It'd never run out. We couldn't contain it all. That's what happens when God's love fills our lives. He fills us to overflowing. And His love spills out on everyone around us. There's always more than enough. Our God says to us, I love you. And through Jesus Christ, we know that these are more than just words alone. I love you, He says. And we respond to His love. Not just with the words alone, but with lives that say, I love you too. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Holy and loving God, 
it is true that you loved us first. You created each and every one of us out of love. You want us to be in a relationship with you. You redeemed us out of love. You continue to sustain us out of love. You show us the way. You forgive us. You give us eternal life, all out of love. You sent your son Jesus out of love. He showed us what love means. Help us to receive your love and may it overflow so that we share that love with the people around us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our service will continue with Holy Communion. And so we invite you to get a piece of bread and some liquid so that you might consume the elements uh, with us. And so if you don't have those, why don't you hit pause on the video. Go ahead and get those things together and come back and join us. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another, praying together. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to continue to pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the, In the name, name of Jesus Christ, Christ you, you are, are forgiven. forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks and, and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ 
redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken for us. This is the blood of Christ, shed for us. You're invited now to consume the elements that you have in your home. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world and the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God's love overflow in your heart so that it spills out on everyone around you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the road